Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. I have to fill you in before I do this next channel with Ms. Carrie Fisher uh, because I need to give you some background. So last night, I, my husband and I slept horribly. I usually have no problem sleeping. I am a great sleeper. And we both were very restless. And at one point I reached over and I said, I can't sleep or I can't, I, the energy, there's energy. And I could feel this heavy energy. It felt scary because it was nighttime. And oftentimes if you get a visit from someone or from spirit and it's night, it can feel scary because it's just, it's dark. I mean, it's like this kind of stuff that Hollywood set us up in the movies for, right? But it was a heavy energy, like a, uh, kind of felt like addiction, how I would feel addiction energy or shadow, the shadow side or the darker side of someone um, who might be dealing with that. And so it just felt dark, shadowy. Again, I, and I knew, I, I in fact, when, when we were up and trying to like get moving for the morning, the husband said, I didn't even sleep last night. I said, I know, me neither, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I've been doing a lot of channeling. And I should know, hello, I should know, because I've been doing this for like 14 years, connecting with the afterlife, connecting with spirit, that once you start talking to people, spirit, it's like the word gets out and then you, your phone starts ringing, your psychic phone, <laughs> you know? And so more spirits want the opportunity to come and chat. All right, let's start. Let's start with Miss Carrie Fisher. Carrie, thank you so much for, um, uh, being here and she says like you like you had a choice Bridget <laughs> she said like you had a choice she said I'm she's like I'm so I'm sorry I am sorry about last night I can't I'm not the only one I cannot just take credit for that you know there are many 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 souls that want the opportunity to connect and to, to speak through you or through other um, mediums and I believed in mediumship. I believed in psychic abilities and I believe strongly, I still, I have, she's like, I still, I believe in intuition and that you've got to follow your intuition, but it can be really complicated in this world to do that. And other people might think you're bizarre or that you're um, unique when you talk about things like, you know, astral projection or the cosmos or cosmic consciousness or that kind of a thing. It is getting more trendy now, but it's not, um, it wasn't, it hasn't always been that way. So, but I believe in God and I've, I, I have tried meditation. I've done yoga. I've done the whole green, try to be green and I, I have been an activist and an advocate, but the most difficult thing, it's so much easier, like she's showing me animals, being an advocate for animals. I don't know if she was like PETA. She feels like she might've been, cause all of a sudden there's like a, there's like a, a boomp, like a, hmm, like a, a stand, kind of like a kind of thing. Uh, PETA person or which is like the animal rights people um, there's definitely an animal connection like I care about animals or I support causes for animals and for kids like when I was actually putting my earrings in I saw this flash of like um, really uh, little uh, kids that were, had beautiful dark skin and it, it might have been in Africa or um, it was like a third world one of the third world countries in the world that has um, struggles really with like malnourishment and poverty and really just, and I saw her there like helping. So I don't know if she actually traveled there overseas to try to help charities with kids and um, their health, like healthcare, which would be um, something that she would have you know advocated or supported um or if she actually just if she or if she just participated in a lot of fundraisers and that kind of thing i don't know she said it kind of it was on again and then off again and on again it feels like she'd come back in to you know be active in hollywood and the public eye and then she'd drop back out and then she'd come back in and then she'd kind of drop back out and she said she doesn't ever really feel accepted and never really felt accepted 
and she is showing me or she's sharing with me that her and her mom are really close and if you can't if you can mom will you please try to stay back a little bit because your energy in itself is just beautiful and very oh my gosh there's so oh, 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 oh. we have to stop for a second whoa overwhelm energy if you feel heart felt energy <laughs> feel that nurturing that genuine love it's so powerful the bond she said it was just the two of us for a long time and there are things i couldn't tell her or couldn't share with her or tried to keep from her or protect her but it didn't it didn't work out that way did it as moms we do the best we can for our children and we think we're making good choices trying to just protect them keep them safe but it, it in the long run it's basic it's, it's the lie, the lie that hurts them the most. Okay, this is interesting. I'm not, are you talking about the dad situation? She says in part, in part, that's part of it. And Carrie kind of hugs her mom and Carrie seems a lot bigger than, than Donna. She seems, I don't know if she's taller or broader and she says, you had to bring up the weight thing. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, no, respectfully, I, that's not at all what I was saying. I was trying to, it, it's important to articulate, to give the bill. She's like, Bridget, it's okay. I understand. She's like, it's okay. She gives me a bad time and she says it with like a straight face. So I don't know if she's like, great sense of humor. She's like, Bridget, it's okay. It's okay. That's not what I meant. But I do want to talk about the weight. Um, she says, I struggled with bulimia. I've struggled with anorexia. I've struggled with being too thin, being too curvy, being, you know, being too something. And I never, it never felt like I was accepted. Like it was acceptable no matter how, what my look was or how good I looked. I never felt good. I still always felt like this just outside blob of, non-talent and I know that's as as you age you get a perspective that you know you understand what you're here for what you're made of and what you love and and acting was part of it but more so I enjoyed writing I like writing and and that is an art and I've journaled for years and my mother got me started on it they both journal I, you guys, ladies, advocate, advocate, perfect, because journaling helps people channel to connect with their loved ones and helps you to process your feelings and emotions. And Carrie says, that's it, to try to work through your demons, you know. She said it's really important not to separate that part of those parts of yourself that you're ashamed of or you feel bad about. It's important to love them. And in order to love them, you have to have a relationship with your bad parts, with the, the anger and the hatred and the the distrust you have to be able to face that stuff inside of you and until you can really do that you can't embrace yourself and you can't be be in a loving state you can't be in loving energy because you don't feel like you are that <clears throat> that <clears throat> wow that hits me in the throat chakra right in the throat and communication and connection that is so true everyone when my throat gets like zinged, you'll see it in vid other videos. Truth. Do y'all feel that? Everybody, breathe that in. Oh, Carrie, that's awesome. That's awesome. I know that because I can feel it. I can feel like your life has been, I mean, I'm not sure the other roles and such that you had after Star Wars, you know, and that was a tremendous amount of fame at one time. And it feels like what she's showing me is that a lot of people, um, because of her mom, especially her mom, but her dad, I mean, again, there's like a darker, uh, there's a side of that that's distrusting. And I'm trying to be savvy when I say this, but um, there's a side that's distrusting because I'm interpreting her energy that she's sharing and she's just showing me the story kind of thing. She's like giving it to me and showing it to me like in a book, like a picture book, a family album, and I am looking through it kind of feeling the vibes. So I'm gonna share that. She's not specifically talking with words about it. She's communicating through the heart, through sensing that channel and visual channel. Um, 
it feels like she never really knew if she got her original jobs because of who her family was and that other actors or actresses or other people in the biz may have felt like she thought she was entitled or that she um like she didn't ha she wasn't able to stand on her own two feet or have her own on her own merits with other people because they always mm, assumed that she got her roles especially the star wars role because that was a really big one because of her connections not necessarily because of her talent or maybe also because of the way she looked and she had the look but we all but if you've seen the movies you know i mean she has talent you are talented and she's like she says oh thank you but that star wars was just a small part of my life but it it really it was the beginning of the end it was the beginning of the unraveling she says and uh it brought me to some really dark corners and she talks like in herself in her soul and i feel like you had some um, abuse experiences can we talk about that or is that okay for me to share that she's like uh, she's like yes because there's other people that have been abused in their life and they need to understand that it's not their fault and you don't have to be a victim and that's easy for me to say that because you know, here, she's like, because I'm dead. That's what she says. <laughs> she's funny. She's like straight line it. She's like, it's easy for me to say that because I'm dead. You know, I don't have to feel. I don't have to live with the pain anymore that you may carry. And she says, <clears throat> this is true. Oh my gosh, this is powerful. Oh my gosh, let's take a moment. If anyone has abuse energy around you or in your experience, let's just take a moment to allow just a loving energy to come into your heart space just to give you a nice hug of support and nurturing energy. So let's just feel her energy for just a second when Bridget has a drink. Drink of water, tea, it's actually tea. I was gonna heat up my water and, and Carrie says, you're gonna need some tea. I'm like, okay, I'll get some tea. Mm. <clears throat> she says you should have a Star Wars mug. <laughs> That's what Carrie just said. I don't. I have a, a Disneyland mug. It actually says Disneyland inside. See, it's Mickey Mouse on this side, Minnie Mouse. And I love Disney. I love me some Disney. And Star Wars is now Disney, so that was funny. Yes, maybe in honor of you, I should get a Star Wars mug. She laughed. She was like, oh, please. That was a long time ago. She says that was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> See, she's funny. She is funny. So when you talk about your life, your life feels like, um, it feels like there's a lot of tragic energy or tragedy. Um, well, that's not even the right word. What would, how would you express this? I'm feeling the heaviness of the pull and the, and the wanting to heal and and really struggling to heal and feeling torn apart. Trying to be someone that you aren't and struggling with roles. Okay, so this is personal. Are you like, um, are you, is it okay if I ask you about your sexuality? She's like, that, that's fine. She says, you know we're androgynous now, right? <laughs> like in the spirit world, there's no sex, there's no gender. It's, well, I shouldn't say that. There is an identification with a personification with the characteristics that you had when you were in body, but there's not, it's not the same as it is to us in human body because they don't have that kind of identification markers. Let's just say that. Wow, that was pretty savvy. She's like, wow, that was, that was, Bridget, that was very diplomatic. That was very impressive. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, above life channel, uh, I told you. Bridget, Bridget's got you, Bridget's good, okay? She's like, well, of course I know, I've heard, I've heard it. She said, the word is spreading. The vibes are spreading. I'm like, oh gosh, she's like, you're gonna need to hire some staff. And she just means spirit staff, don't worry, not real people. Uh, okay, so androgynous. Um, she's Here's how she's responding, love is love. Love is love. You love who you love. Does it, it doesn't matter what type of body or shape they take. Love is love, that's what she says. And she kind of jokes and she's like, well, people love their dogs. People love dogs like they're people and their kids and they're not people and kids. 
She's like, so love takes different forms, doesn't it? So why should it be, why should there be a barrier based upon the type of body you are or the type of skin you have, the color of your skin or even the part of the world you live in? She's like, it's sold to soul. Okay, so I'm going to take that as a yes. At the very least, there's a bi energy there. In your human life, did you express that? She says yes. Okay. Um, I feel like there was a lot of difficulty with males. Um, and it feels like there was trauma related to males. Is that where the abuse comes in? She said yes. Yeah, there was a lot of abuse, both physical, emotional. She's like, everybody's asking, you know, nowadays, everything's, everybody's talking about the Hollywood stuff, the you know, power in Hollywood and the abuse by men and all that. And she said, so yes, I'm part of that movement. She said, pound me too. And okay, that's powerful. Pound me too, hashtag me too. Wow, that's okay. I can feel that. Okay, I don't need to, I'm very visual. I don't need to, she's like, she's like, I'm sorry. She's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't want to, she says, I don't want to overload your circuits. I'm like, please don't. She says, that's why my mom's here. My mother manages things well. I'm like, she does. She definitely manages things well. She was always there for me. She always came to my rescue. She was always there. And even when I pushed her away, when I was, it looks like she was married for a while. And when she had an abusive scenario and related to that, and there was like infidelity, I don't know if it was her part or her husband's part, but it looks like she was married to a man and it was difficult. And she kind of separated herself from her family and tried to push everything out and create herself new, but it didn't work that way. And she went more into a spiral, but her mom was always there every time. She shows me that she's been in rehab a few times for different things, you know, different addictions. And, you know, drugs and alcohol are a deadly, she says it's a deadly combination. It's deadly. It does not numb you. It makes everything unlivable. It makes it so much worse in the moment. It feels like you're getting some relief, but it's so temporary. It just compounds after that. Then when you get sober, you, it's compounded. You have to deal with it. You have to find a way to live with the pain and the scars and recognize that that other person, those other people that have inflicted those experiences upon you, that they don't deserve your attention. They don't deserve your life. And that's what you're giving them when you're drinking or when you're shooting up or when you're, whatever it is that you're doing to your body to abuse yourself, because that's what you're doing. You're invoking that physical, emotional abuse upon yourself by drinking and doing drugs and you're kidding yourself if you think oh it's just a joint it's just a little bit it's not that's not that's not how it works if if and i will say this if you are an addictive personality if you have abuse in your past if you have the painful emotional trauma and the the open wounds that alcohol will pour right into the open wounds and fill it up like a swimming pool and the smoke from whatever it is you're inhaling, it takes you out of your mind and makes you think you're escaping, but you're never escaping. It's just bringing you down into the darkest dungeons. And when you're in those places, nobody hears you scream. No one hears you scream. It's like within yourself, she's showing me. I'm like, this is really powerful. Anybody who's struggling with addictions, anybody who knows that they are, that life creates a whole set of hurdles or challenges because of past abuse experiences, please reach out and get some help. You deserve the support from a counselor, a licensed clinical social worker, a therapist, you can access people from your health insurance. Sometimes there's free programs offered through your work or your employee assistance programs. Check with your employer and it's private and confidential. You can also look online. There are so many 1-800 numbers for crisis connections and suicide prevention hotlines and addiction help. There are so many mental health counseling counselors available to you. Don't use the excuse that I don't know how to access that or I don't want to do that or, you know, you have to make that, you have to make that a priority for you. 
to get the help that you need. And it's not because she said, this is really important. <clears throat> Whoa, okay, Carrie, geez, your energy. It just pushes me like, like she almost like she punches me. I'm like, she is so powerful. She's like a big lady. Like she, like she seems tall to me. I'm five, eight and a half. I'm almost five, nine. Depends on how nice I stand up. Um, she feels tall, like at least like five, nine, I would say. Now, I don't know if it's just because she wears great big platform heels and her heels aren't spiky heels. They're thick, wide, chunky heels. That's what she's showing me. So, well, hey, I'm going to talk about your fashion. <sighs> Go back to what you were talking about. She just she's there's an emotion emotions coming out so there she's she's kind of I'm feeling the emotions she's saying I know it's hard to talk to people who have addiction other people that you love might be going through this and you might see them on that you know uh, then that spiral and it might be you might be real tired and real exhausted and from dealing with that but she says don't give up on them just you gotta just love them, just love them. I'm not saying do something for them, make them codependent. I'm not saying do everything for them. I'm not saying that. I am saying just love them, love them. Whatever you can do for love, just love them with the emotion of love. That's all she's saying. She's not showing me to do anything for them. She's just saying love them. Because they gotta love themselves. And if you love them, then maybe they might come around to recognizing that they are worthy of love. But just just love them. That's what you can do. She's saying that's what you can do. And she's looking at her mom. She's like, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. That's what you can do. And she's like, it's so heartbreaking to watch your loved ones go through this, these, these hard times. But all you can do is love them. All you can do is love them. There are just, there's a moment there. <clears throat> and Carrie says, I really wanted to come to talk because I want to give other people the opportunity to empower themselves. Other people do not deserve your present and your future. If you were abused in the past, if you dealt with some really difficult, horrific things you would never wanna tell anybody about, you have to recognize that it's not you that's the bad guy, it's that person. And they do not deserve your today, your tomorrow, your next week, years from they do not deserve the rest of your life they do not deserve it you do and there's a freedom that comes when you can actually recognize that it's not you like that's not who you are what happened to you isn't who you are and even if you're in the situation where you're making mistakes you're choosing you're making bad choices with the heroin she keeps bringing up heroin i don't know what that's about and pills, painkillers, and alcohol, and you're making bad choices. You're, you're hurting your body. You are abusing your own body. That's not the way to heal it. That's not the way to fix that pain. But there are places you can go to help you with that. All of that stuff, everything. You're not messed up, she says. I want people to understand that you're not broken. Nobody broke you. Nobody can break you. You are strong. You are powerful. And she says, I want to talk to the ladies, the women. I want the women to hear this. She's like, you are a powerful woman. You are a being of light. She's like, Bridget's going to love this. <laughs> I do. Keep going. You go. Go, Carrie Fisher. Go, Carrie Fisher. Yes. Say it to the women. Tell them. Yes, I want to just cheer her on. She's like, you are a powerful woman. You are a force in the universe. And nobody, nobody can own that. Nobody owns that. That's you. That's who you are. Start acting like you rule the world because you do rule the world. B was right. You do. Stop giving that power away. Today is today. You are not who you were in in the past. You were not who you were in that moment when you took that drink and you knew you shouldn't. You are not who you were when that person caused you horrible pain. I'm not saying let it go. I'm not saying let it go. Because you know what? It's part of you. It didn't break you. It didn't wreck you. You are who you are. 
You are strong. And you are stronger than I am. Be stronger than I was. Please, please be stronger. Be stronger than I could be. Oh, Carrie, that is beautiful. And then she shows me she's got like these, some necklaces hanging. Um, she has kind of this bohemian, um, boho kind of vibe. And she's got these necklaces hanging down. And there's one that has like, a, it looks like a leaf or a feather. Kind of native. She got a little bit of a native vibe. Interesting, because I, I grabbed some um, California white sage, actually. So maybe that's why I haven't used it for a long time. Because I really, to me, it's too strong. It's very masculine. But she loves it. So we're going to burn that after session today and this is just a session thank you for coming it was nice to meet you i hope to talk to you again she said oh it would be lovely she said that would be so that would be lovely and i'm glad that you and your daughter are together in the afterlife as it should be i will mention that um so when i was chatting with my husband so i'm coming around to to kind of close this circle here when i was chatting with my husband on my phone today heading home i i said to him i stopped like i, I was in the garage and i I was getting ready to get out of the car, but I stopped and I said, you know, it's kind of odd. I see the, you guys together, like even in the afterlife, like I kind of feel like um, I saw these these um, images and uh, it's kind of how it started last, like a couple of weeks ago when I started channeling, um, recording all my channels with famous Hollywood people and historic people. I uh, saw this video of the... Hollywood Forever Cemetery, Westview, is that right? And I, I was just, and I was like, oh. And it came up on my YouTube feed because of one of my videos for my channelings that I do. And then there was this other, I must have been doing, I'm a, I don't know. And, and it came up on my YouTube feed and I thought, what is this? And I think, I think I've been there because I grew up going to California. I loved Hollywood. Like we would walk on the, pa the sidewalks in Hollywood, and um, I'd go do the tours of Universal Studios. I just loved it. God, did I love that. Oh, grew up going there, you know? Just so cool. And the last time I was there, well, I wasn't in Hollywood. Well, yeah, we drove through West Hollywood. It was, the traffic sucks there. Whoa, I forgot how bad that was. That was when I was 40. My 40th birthday, I went to Disneyland. And I drove right through Hollywood there when I flew into LAX. God, the traffic never gets better. Anyway, um, but I grew up going there, and when I saw the images of the cemetery, I was like, I, I swear I've been here. The, the one where Marilyn Monroe had died, or, or died, was is buried. And I was like, I just was like drawn into the energy, and I'm like, I had to stop watching it because I was like so like, oh my God, I could talk. I'm like, I could talk to all these people because it, they're fascinating. It's interesting. And when I saw that, so, so that image was in my mind. Um, it came into my mind as I was going to get out of the, the car today and talking to my husband about talking to you, Ms. Carrie Fisher. And I saw this like image of the cemetery and then I saw the two of you. I saw both of you like, like almost like this archway and I saw like it was kind of dark in there, like shaded out of the sun. And not dark like creepy I mean I guess it could be if it was night but and then there was like this place and then like I, I don't know if that was your resting place I don't know if that's where you're buried now I'm so curious I gotta look it up after this video I gotta look it up like where you guys are buried but I feel like you're right together and there's this like really peaceful beautiful like kind of arch thing and like there's stone and then there's grass and it's just and I don't know if it's totally enclosed I'm not sure what's going on there it feels like it's open like there's an uh, and there's like um not flowers, but um, greenery and like, not palms, but some other kind of, kind of flowers that do not, or kind of plants that do not grow in Minnesota, let's just say, because it's a beautiful climate and there's stone and, oh God, it's gorgeous. That's the energy I kind of see. And I see you guys in there and I see it quiet. I see, I see peace. And I want to share that with everyone that's watching. Peace, there's a tremendous amount of peace and that's coming through. And so uh, thank you, Carrie, for the message for, for the people who are watching or listening. And thank you for bringing in that beautiful, supportive mother energy and energy to support your loved ones who are dealing with addiction or have, who have dealt with abuse or if you yourself have as well. I hope that this will inspire you, touch you. And remember, the whole purpose of the Above Life channels are to give you inspiration, give you hope for your life. So this is your life. So live it. 
This is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here today. If you like this video, make sure you like it, share it with others you think would benefit from it, and be sure to subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss any of the video uploads of the channels that I do. Thanks for being here.